The Prime Minister yesterday repeatedly failed to confirm whether David Mundell made representations over Scotland receiving its fair share in funding following the Tory DUP deal. Does the First Minister agree with me that it is now obvious he made no such effort? First Minister. Well, I think it's obvious to anybody that David Mundell, the Secretary of State for Scotland, did not lift a finger yeah. to try to make sure that Scotland got additional funding in the same way that Northern Ireland got additional funding. And if the normal rules had been applied here, Scotland would be looking at additional funding of almost three billion pounds. But thanks to uh, David Mundell not lifting a finger, thanks to these 13 Tory MPs that just a couple of weeks ago we were getting told we're going to be ruling the roost in number 10 and in London. Instead they've gone AWOL and Scotland hasn't got a single penny. Shame on the Scottish Conservatives and shame on the Secretary of State for Scotland. When you know I was watching him uh, yesterday trying to wriggle his way out of the fact that just a few days ago he was saying he would never stand for something that gave money by the back door to Northern Ireland. It seems that when he was asked what he did to stand up for Scotland the answer was simply this. When the Tories came to shaft and sell out Scotland all David Mundell did was try to make sure they did it transparently. I think people have got the right to expect a lot more from the so-called Secretary of State for Scotland. My colleagues at the Sunday Politics Scotland, I'm not going to support just giving money to Northern Ireland. I'm going to support funding which, in which the usual rules and requirements apply. Do you really think that's what's happened here? The usual rules and requirements do apply in relation to the agreement that's been reached uh, with the DUP. I was very clear that any arrangement had to be absolutely transparent. It is. I, had, I was clear that it had to be subject to the Barnet rules. It is. I was also clear that there should be no subversion of the Barnet rules, and that hasn't happened. As part of this process, did you ask for more money for Scotland to accompany more money for Northern Ireland? I'm clear that this is an arrangement uh, with the DUP. That's what we've but been... did you ask for more what, money what for Scotland? We've been, what we've been very clear on was this was an arrangement with the DUP. That's what's been announced, that's what's been signed off. Be Mr Speaker... The Scottish Secretary insisted that Scotland would see increased funding if the DUP secured money for Northern Ireland ah, as part of a confidence and supply deal, quote, insisting, as I quote, I am not going to agree to anything that could be constructed as backdoor funding to Northern Ireland. Ah. Did the Prime Minister receive any representations from the Scottish Secretary about the DUP deal, either before or after it was signed? Yeah. Can I say to the, uh, the Honourable Gentleman that, of course, when we look at what has happened in terms of funding for the rest of the United Kingdom, in the autumn statement last year, my right honourable friend the Chancellor set aside an infrastructure fund of £23 billion. We're putting more money into our NHS, more money into uh, our schools. And of course, there is an impact on Scotland as a result of that autumn statement. £800 million extra spending is going to Scotland. As a result of the budget, £350 million extra is going to Scotland. I don't remember when that money was announced for Scotland, the Honourable Gentleman uh, complaining about uh, that more money should be going to Northern Ireland. But then, of course, he's a nationalist and not a unionist. Ian Blackford! Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister's failure to give a straight answer to that question... Mr Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. No respect. The Prime Minister's failure to give a straight answer to that question speaks volumes and has only succeeded in piling more pressure on the Scottish Secretary, whose position now looks less secure with every day that passes. The Honourable Gentleman's question and I think he's reaching his peroration, must be heard. I will give the Prime Minister one more opportunity. Did she, did she receive any representations about the DUP deal from the Secretary of State for Scotland? Yes or no? I can, I can 
can assure the honourable gentleman that I regularly receive representations from the Secretary of State for Scotland about, uh, about matters relating to Scotland, including regular representations which point out that if the Scottish nationalists actually have the interests of Scotland at heart, they will want to remain part of the United Kingdom. Good afternoon. We're going to have a debate in this Parliament on the findings of the Commission on Parliamentary Reform. Made up of MSPs and experts, it took, ex it took evidence on the workings of this place and how we need to improve it. And here's what it said. It said that inaccurate or poor answers damage the reputation of Parliament and it damages people's trust in Parliament. What the Ministerial Code of Conduct is to the First Minister, it says, it is of paramount importance that ministers give accurate and truthful information to the Parliament, correcting any inadvertent error at the earliest opportunity. Ruth Davidson really wants to talk about lack of transparency in answers given to a Parliament. Perhaps you'll go and watch the video of Theresa May in the House of Commons yesterday. Refusing, refusing to answer the simple question. Did the Secretary of State lobby for Scotland to get the same money that went to Northern Ireland? Yes or no? Perhaps Ruth Davidson will answer it today because the fact of the matter is no amount of camouflage from Ruth Davidson will hide this point. No amount of camouflage will hide this point. That while she rides along in her one-trick pony going on and on and on about a referendum, her MPs are selling Scotland down the river. They sold Scotland down the river when it came to £3 billion of extra funding and they sold Scotland down the river when it came to public sector workers. When it comes to Ruth Davidson, it's all mouth and no trousers, camouflage or otherwise. She should be ashamed of herself. Ruth Davidson mentioned apologies. I think there is an apology due uh, to the people of Scotland this week. And it's an apology due from Ruth Davidson for allowing her MPs in Westminster to do two things. Firstly, presiding officer, allowing them to sit back while Scotland was denied the same extra funding that went to Northern Ireland. And secondly, an apology for being the MPs in the House of Commons last night that voted to block a pay rise for public sector workers. Perhaps that's the apology people in Scotland want to see. 